In this video, we'll take a closer look at the parameters associated with Q-Learning. Here is the update rule for Q-Learning. Now recall that a Q value is the utility or long-term expected return of taking an action, A sub T, in a given state, S sub T. This is defined as the immediate reward you get from taking that action in that state, plus the discounted utility of the state you end up in. Now, gamma is the discount factor, and it influences how much you care about getting rewards sooner rather than later. If gamma is one, then getting some high reward on the thousandth time step is just as good as getting it on the third time step. There's no difference. But if gamma is less than one, then it becomes more important to get rewards sooner rather than later. In the extreme case, reducing gamma all the way to zero means the agent will only care about its immediate rewards and will completely ignore rewards in the future. A gamma value in the range 0.9 and up is reasonable. Now, the utility of a state is the Q value of the best action from that state. That's represented here. This sub-expression says that from the state you reach on the next time step, hence su the subscript of t plus 1, consider all the actions, that's what it means for the a to be under the max here, so plug each possible action into this expression, compare them all, and take the maximum value. In fact, another way of writing this out is the following. Here, v simply means the value or utility of this state. Of course, this version of it gives us a way of actually calculating this value, but this definition helps us understand this rule a bit easier. Now, if we wanted to update the Q value for S sub T, A sub T, based on a single experience we had, we could simply replace this value with R sub T plus one plus gamma times the max across actions of the Q value in the next state. And when I say replace, I mean we would use an equal rather than a plus equals. However, we don't want to base our updates on a single experience. The occurrences in reinforcement learning domains are probabilistic. So it would be foolish to use a single experience to completely change our estimate of the Q value of a given state. So instead, we look at the difference between our current estimate of the Q value and an estimate based on the value of the next state. So we know that the reward we get plus the discounted utility in the next state is what this value should eventually be. They should be the same. So if they are the same, subtracting them will result in a value of zero, which will, result, which will result in no change at all to our estimate. If that keeps happening, then it means our policy is converged and we don't need to update it anymore. However, odds are, especially early on, that this value and this value will be different. And so when we subtract one from the other, we get how different they are. Once again, if we simply wanted to replace the current estimate with this other estimate, we could simply update the Q value by the difference. But we want to learn in small increments, and that's where alpha comes in. Alpha is the learning rate. Alpha needs to be something less than one. If it were one, then we would simply be replacing our current Q value estimate with an estimate based on the state we end up in. Instead, 
we push our estimate slightly towards the estimate based on the next state. There are two good reasons for doing this. One is that early on, the Q values for the states we end up in will not be accurate either. So it would be foolish to assume they're correct and update our policy under that assumption. We only make small adjustments in, so that in the long run, we'll move towards the goal. The other reason that we only want to make these small updates is that the Q value is the expected utility across all possible outcomes. That means that this given reward and ending up in this particular state will not always happen. Sometimes when we do action A sub T in state S sub T, we'll end up in a different state. And by doing small updates, we will eventually get an expected utility that takes into account the frequency with which we experience these different outcomes. There is an extra parameter for Q-learning not shown here, and that is epsilon. This parameter epsilon influences the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Exploitation is when an agent chooses the action which it currently thinks is the best action in a given state. Exploration is when an agent tries something new that it hasn't tried before. In the previous video, I, human, controlled the agent, but we want to automate this whole process. In general, our agent should do good actions. We only need to learn about the good actions. But since we don't know for certain which actions are good, we have to try out all the actions at least a few times. This means occasionally doing something even if we think, for the moment at least, that it's bad. We can't ignore anything forever. Epsilon is the percentage of the time that our Q-learning agent will do a completely random action while it is learning. That means that if we set this to something like 0 0.1, which would correspond to 10%, then 90% of the time, while our Q learning agent is learning, it will do whichever action its Q values say is best. Now, early on, its policy or its Q values are completely wrong, and so they will click quickly adjust and even actions which are supposedly exploiting the information available will actually result in lots of exploration. However, later in the search process, these values will converge, meaning that an agent will tend to take the same actions over and over in given states. But there is always a chance that its estimates are wrong so some degree of exploration is needed. 10% of the time, the agent will do a completely random action. Now, because it's completely random, it might even do the optimal action on occasion. But often it will do a suboptimal action, which is fine because this learning update will learn a policy based off of the best action from the state it ends up in. This means that Q-learning is an off policy method. What does this mean? It means that the agent will use one policy while learning, specifically a policy in which the agent does random actions 10% of the time, known as an epsilon greedy policy for some definition of epsilon. But even though the agent is using this policy, the policy reflected in the Q values it learns will be the optimal policy. This differs from on policy methods 
which have to learn a policy that will behave as best as possible, assuming that the agent will sometimes make these random actions. An example of this is SARSA, a different algorithm which we will talk about in class. In either case, if you have an agent behaving in the real world, you'll generally want to gradually reduce epsilon to zero because if the Q values are no longer changing significantly, it's foolish to keep doing suboptimal actions. However, it ultimately depends on whether or not you are learning an agent that is receiving real rewards and punishments or simply doing something in simulation in which it's okay to do bad actions because when you take the policy out and put it into the quote-unquote real agent, you won't have to do any exploration anymore. Another case in which you will not want to reduce epsilon over time is if the environment is constantly changing. This is yet another decision which you'll have to take into account when setting up your agents.